JC, how will you turn Jurassic Park into a musical? Easy. I will choose an existing musical number based on the purpose and overall vibe it brings to the story it belongs to and put it into the most appropriate place in the Jurassic Park story. Get it? To help me truly geek out in the Jurassic Park reaction footage you'll see throughout, I've invited an unofficial dinosaur slash Spielberg enthusiast. What makes Jurassic Park such a good film, in your opinion? Dinosaurs. <laughs> Did you know that there's dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? You know that scene where they see the Brachiosaurus walking past mm -hmm. and they all go... <sighs> <sighs> that was the magic. And we see the magic on their face being mm. like... And then we as an audience experience that. It's that slow tease that Steven Spielberg mm. is giving us so that when that moment happens, it feels like magic. Exactly. But before we watch any scenes, what is a musical? A production that uses acting, singing, and sometimes dancing to tell a story. Each musical number must serve a purpose to develop character or move the story forward. Oh, this guy. Oh, sexiest man to die on screen. I think that's debatable. Well, who else? Sean Bean. <laughs> He's died on screen too many times, it's old. Look how much screen time he's getting. I know! Look at that ass! That is a nice ass, actually. <laughs> See? Sexiest man to die on screen. Shoot him! So that's what you're talking about, the magic. We don't actually see any of the dinosaur, just the eye. Just the eye. Mm. Look at the contrast between this dweeby lawyer and all these strong characters. I love the use of torches throughout this film. Who needs lighting? Fire the gaffer. Get a headlamp. Sorry, Bruce. You're fired. I'm going to use these 12 torches. <laughs> the opening number is essential for setting the tone for the rest of the movie. It is even more memorable if it sets up the story's world and alludes to themes yet to come. A great example of this is... The hills are alive with the sound of music. It sets the movie's playful, sincere, and somewhat glamorized tone while also introducing us to the mountains and Salzburg. Thematically, it introduces the importance of music in Maria's life and the freedom it brings, and how she will share this passion with other characters throughout the movie. But if I'm to stay true to the story of Jurassic Park and how it opens, then the main character should not sing this opening song. So instead, I'm going to take inspiration from this opening number. Split the eyes apart and break the frozen Frozen's opening number is grand and dramatic but includes a hint of humour. <laughs> The visuals prepare us for the treachery of ice and the lyrics warn about the frozen heart. Two crucial elements of the story. I want to achieve something similar in my mash. We could see the park rangers sing as they battle against the velociraptor as the diggers also sing about the power and mystery of the amber. It still sets up two crucial key elements. Dinosaurs and amber, but cutting back and forth between them could create a powerful juxtaposition. Ice has a magic and he controls stronger than one, stronger than ten, stronger than a hundred men. I will need a lead singer to tie this ensemble number together. <laughs> the lawyer. Beautiful, powerful, dangerous, cold. He questions the safety of the park, introducing the critical question explored throughout the movie. I call it a $20 million lawsuit. <laughs> Computers. Look at him standing up in shots. First line is, I, I hate, hate computers. computers. You keep still because you think that maybe his visual acuity is based on movement like T-Rex. Not only are we finding out how much Sam Neill hates kids, he's also foreshadowing how everyone's going to die later. He's setting up the rules of the world, but you don't notice because it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. You are alive when they start to eat you. Best introduction to a character coming up right now is it's ass shot first. <laughs> oh. We just dug up a new skeleton. I, well, I could compensate you by fully funding your dig. They take like all of two seconds to be convinced because they hear like, oh money, oh money. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He did the same thing in the third movie. You think he would learn? Yeah. The 
the I want song usually happens in the first act. One or more of the main characters sing about their desires, propelling them into the rest of the story. Tiana sings about her dream of her restaurant. But I know exactly where I'm going. I'm Eliza lists many things she wants, all adding up to a life different from the one she has now. All I want is a room somewhere far away from the cold night air. Except for my mash, I don't have just one character singing the I Want song. I want to hear from Alan Grant, Ali Sadler and John Hammond. Therefore, I'm going to take inspiration from this song. For the ones to be the king, to sell the cow, to make the potions, to to sell, to get, to bring, to... These characters express their goals for the story, their voices weaving in and out and the lyrics complementing one another. I want to do the same. Alan wants the job of a paleontologist to stay the same, stuck in the past. A few more years development and we won't even have to dig anymore. Where's the fun in that? Ali debates if she wants kids, thinking about the future. You want to have one of those? I don't want that kid, but a breed of child Dr. Grant could be intriguing. John invites them to his park so they can sign off on it, living in the present. It's right up your alley. I call it... Could get back on schedule. Uh, schedule. <laughs> hat off. Because when you can't believe something, the hat comes off. Yeah. <sighs> the jaw is dropped. See the magic. That's the magic. We're gonna make millions. We're gonna make a, a fortune. fortune. This place. <laughs> you said you've got a T Rex. Uh huh. You've got a T Rex. Say again. I'll say again. Sam Neill's Oscar winning uh, <laughs> performance right here of man falls to his knees, needs to vomit. <gasps> How'd you do this? I'll show you. I'll show you. What do you think? Alan Grant even heard him say that. I mean, he said it so softly. So softly. What'd you say? Come here. Can you show me, please? The promise of the premise song usually takes place in the movie's first half. It's a show tune that delivers on the hook on why we wanted to watch the movie in the first place. The hour. It does so by laying out what's at stake for the story without raising those stakes simultaneously. It'd be spectacular to do a promise of the premise song when Alan and Ali first see the dinosaurs. And the song that catches the vibe I want is this one. I look handsome, I look smart, I am a walking work of art. It's energetic, vibrant, catchy, and builds and builds to a big finish. Cream and crimson and silver and rose and azure and lemon and rusted and grey. And the irony that Richard Attenborough sings in this song is not lost on me. He reminded me of her. But I also chose it because there is growing tension in this joy. The brothers are jealous of Joseph. And when Joseph grazed the scene, his brothers turned a shade of green. In my mash, they are listing all the dinosaurs instead of the colors. It's it's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. The growing tension can come from Ian Malcolm singing, what, why, how? And the lawyer responding with, who cares? We're gonna make a fortune. We're gonna make a fortune. We're gonna make a fortune with this place. I call this show tune. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Just one drop of your blood contains billions of strands of DNA. It is a very consumable way mm. for us to get a huge amount of information on how they do this. For sure. And we're learning with the characters as well. They fit on the blood of animals. Even dinosaurs. Even dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm having a lot of trouble with seatbelts in this movie. Uh, I can't do that. And they just lift their ones so easily. I know. Come on, Ben. Come on, little one. 
the first dinosaur that we meet properly. Me. What species is this? It's a velociraptor. I love that he says it so offhandedly. Yeah, it just shows that they had no idea what was about to come. Sometimes in musicals there will be a comment song somewhere in Act 2. One character advises another character, helping them understand exposition relevant to the story. Either way, without this song, the movie's climax wouldn't have the same effect. Tracy encourages her mother to take a chance. Hey, mama, hey, mama, take a chance! Oh, Tracy, it's been years since someone asked me to dance. It's why the climax is so satisfying when this happens. So I'm gonna shake and shimmy at the best that I can today. To explain how they clone the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, I want to take inspiration from this comment song. Do something special, anything that's special, anything that's special. Without these women and their advice, Gypsy would not have the courage or know-how to become the person she is by the end of the movie. This song is upbeat, edgy, and hilarious. You can uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh. But what I really want to take from it is the song's construction. Each singer takes their turn before they come together for the final chorus. Get yourself a gimmick and you too. The three characters I want to sing for my mash would be John Hammond, The DNA Strand, and Dr. Wu. I call this song I need a drop of blood. Thank you, Dr. Malcolm, but I think things are a little bit different than you and I had feared. Yeah, I know, they're a lot worse. Again, they were like, let's fire the DP and let's just use projectors for yeah, lighting. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. This scene is very much thematic, but it's done in such a clever way that it's revealed through conflict and through character. And we're gonna move in slowly to add effect to the line. <laughs> I am song lets one or more characters express their reactions to a dramatic situation and expose their attitudes to life. Because of this, the themes of the story usually shine through. I am changing. Effie's views of her current situation of being replaced as a lead singer and love interest seep into the lyrics. This song also highlights the consequences of chasing fame. How many good friends have all for my mash, however, as I have a few characters that need to express their views, I'm going to take inspiration from this I Am song. The characters take turns telling their story, exposing their views, and building to a bone-chilling climax. And hell, the choreography is insane and lighting moody AF. A similar dangerous vibe would work wonders for an I Am song where the Jurassic Park characters debate the legitimacy of the park. I call this show tune that life uh, finds a way. Dodson, Dodson, <laughs> we got Dodson here. Don't get cheap on me, Dodson. That was Hammond's mistake. Uh -huh. Ooh. One line and it tells you everything you need to know. Conflict. Mm -hmm. Amber, they are your problems. Oh, you're right, John. You're absolutely right. You know, everything's my problem. This just reminds me of so many of my friendships. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you in this situation? I love that they bicker. I'm both of them. <laughs> oh, okay. This is me in the mirror. Now, some of the best musical numbers are by the villains. You'll be a you have a talent for causing things. Hey, hey. You can't be my best of friends as opposed to paying dues. But don't nobody bring me no bad news. I see you shiver with anticipation. So, of course, Dennis is going to get a number. And it has to be on par with this creepy yet catchy number. I'll see her crawl into place. The lyrics are so dark and vengeful, but offset by this comical chorus of birds. 
find her. I'm not quite sure what the equivalent of singing bugs could be in this mash of Jurassic Park. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. This song shall be dubbed... I'm totally unappreciated in my time. Excuse to touch her hand. Mm. Oh yeah. This is how you flirt. So much. With chaos theory. <laughs> And that's you when I'm flirting with someone, you're just looking out the window. Oh, I thought you were going to say I'm the dinosaur passed out on the grass. <laughs> yeah. And apart from that little baby dinosaur, this is like the first time we see one up close. Mm. And she's like almost crying. She is crying. <gasps> that's the magic. He is loving the magic. And now she's loving him, loving the magic. So now they are... Separated. Separated. What does that mean? Well, it raises the stakes, right? We've got more tension because the party's splitting up so anything can happen. My personal favourite musical numbers are comedy songs. I particularly love the ones that are brought to life by secondary characters. And with very little trouble, I can pull out all their hair. <laughs> their primary purpose is to make the audience laugh, alleviating any tension before something significant happens so when it does it hits us with a wham. Sometimes they can also provide a different perspective on theme, like this one. I can see what you want, but you see to put a comedy song just before the midpoint in Jurassic Park. The last peaceful moment before the group splits up and things go wrong. And I'd like this song to be as fun and joyous as this. Make them laugh, make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? <laughs> it's chaotic and unpredictable, but gives us insight into Cosmo with his wholesome message. Make them laugh, don't you? All the what? So I want to hear from Ian Malcolm about his chaos theory in an equally chaotic way. Look at this. See? See? I'm right again. Nobody could have predicted that Dr. Grant would suddenly, suddenly jump out of a moving vehicle. To up the comedy, I want every character around him to ignore him and what he has to say as they are distracted by the dinosaur and what is making it sick. This comedy song is called... That is one big pile of shit. I bet you want to know what song the T-Rex is going to get. <laughs> Subscribe to ensure you don't miss part two of this mash. Until the next mash, bye! But Cardi, oh Or move this, oh shit. Can we just acknowledge this guy's curly mullet? I think that is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> never noticed that before and I never wanted to. I love that she's rocking double denim right now. What about his double white linen on linen? What are they trying to say about his character, I wonder, with the costume choice? <laughs> Let's not put that one in there. <laughs>